Welcome to Toddler Social Emotional Development. How can I aid in the social emotional development of a toddler? Self awareness. By the toddler's first birthday, they have developed highly physical and mental skills moving and reaching by themselves, and beginning to talk. These skills influence their relationship with others. Self-awareness emerges as a self, me, and mine, and a drive for independence. They will become aware of how they look, what belongs to them, and what doesn't. And often you'll hear them say, mine, mine, as they think everything belongs to them. They'll become of what they can, can and cannot do physically. This is where a lot of experimentation comes, um, comes along with toddlers because they're going to try to want to do everything and they're going to experiment to see what they can and cannot do. Unfortunately, there's going to be probably a great deal of scrapes and falls along with that. Also, becoming aware of others' feelings towards them and how they can affect others. This lays the foundation for feelings about oneself. Achieving autonomy. Erickson states if they develop a sense of trust, remember we talked about trust versus mistrust in the infant years, they will enter into the second stage, autonomy versus shame and doubt. For most children, this stage begins between 12 and 18 months and is completed around three years of age. Autonomy builds on the toddler's expanding motor and mental skills. Toddlers are proud, or are proud of their new skills and want to use them, and they're going to show you everything they do. They're very proud of what they can, can and cannot do. The independent feeling comes from the toddler's increasing self-awareness of their abilities. Erickson felt caregivers should recognize a toddler's desire to be more independent. Let them do some things on their own. You know they're not going to be able to do everything on their own, but let them do what they can do on their own and grow from there. Toddlers do not understand the results of some of their actions. Therefore, this is where you're going to see bumps and scrapes and bruises, um, things spilled, things thrown. There might be a lot of cleanup involved in this as, you know, they're, they're experimenting to see what, how they can do things. Parents and toddlers may have conflicts when adult offers to help or take over the task. This is where the terrible two, another place where the terrible twos come into to play where the toddler is trying to do things and the parent sees the child struggling and wants to be able to help them and the toddler has a meltdown because they want to do it all by themselves or because you know what they're trying to put on their jacket and you need to be out the door five minutes ago so you just scoop them up and put on their jacket which once again it may cause those terrible twos to rear their ugly head when limits need to be set or things do not go the right way, negative attitudes surface. Toddlers need to control negative impulses. Impatient caregivers who do for toddlers what they can do for themselves cause damage. <clears throat> um, when I worked in the special ed classroom, we had a young man in there that he didn't do anything for themselves. Even putting on his jacket, he couldn't, would not do for himself. He had learned that if he acted helpless, everybody would do things for him. Don't do this for your toddlers. Let them do what they can do. Make them do what you know they can do. I understand there's time restraints. I struggle with that myself some days with my child who's 10. But let them do plan ahead so that you're not running out the door if at all possible at the last minute. Um, criticizing or overprotecting leads them to feel they can't control their world and causes a sense of shame and doubt. Right? 
try not to be that overprotective parent who doesn't allow their child to do anything because they're going to see their friends or others like them who are able to do things and this is going to cause problems for them um, they're not going to get into that autonomy they're not going to be able to do things for themselves they're going to be very doubtful and insecure in their abilities promoting a toddler's autonomy adults can promote by giving toddlers safe choices first choices offer Offer should be simple, such as indoor versus outdoor play. You know, give them choices in what they're wearing. Do you want to wear the red shirt or do you want to wear the blue shirt? It's a simple choice. They should be offered two alternatives and allowed to choose apple juice or milk. Okay, don't give them a choice whether they want to nap or not. That is not a choice, a, a smart choice to give a child. You know, give them good choices the blue shirt versus the red shirt, apple juice versus the milk. Do you want to play outside or do you want to play inside? Make sure that if, when you're giving them that choice, though, that conditions are make sure you have milk. Make sure you have apple juice. Make sure it's not cold out or raining outside. Okay? But then you have to stand by those options. You know, if you the child wants to go outside and play and you go outside and it's cold and windy, you can't say, hey, nope, we can't play outside now because then you're going to have problems. You're going to have a meltdown. Go outside, play for a little bit outside, and then come inside. Offer another alternative to bring the child inside. Caregivers should step in and redirect if the toddler engages in a forbidden or unsafe action. Um, if they're going after something that they shouldn't go after. You know, the cleaning products are under the kitchen sink and you forgot to put the, the latch back on the cabinets. And they're going in there and they're going after cleaning products. It may be instinctive to yell and say, oh, don't do that, don't do that. Try to stay calm when you're doing stuff like that. You know, um, it's Christmas time and the child is fascinated by your Christmas tree. And you have a climber and they're trying to climb the Christmas tree. Your first reaction would be, get away from there. You have to be calm. Stay calm with them, okay? When you confront the child, stay calm. Try to redirect them. Give them something else to do. Hey, let's not play with this Christmas tree. Have other Christmas things that they can play with. Maybe you have a felt Christmas tree that they can decorate on another wall. Or you have window clings where they can decorate a Christmas tree. Give them alternatives, safe alternatives. And you know what? If you should fly off the handle because it just frightens you, and it happens, you know, the child does something, you see them out of the corner of their eye, your eye, and they're climbing on something or going after something that they shouldn't do, and you scream at them, you know what, it happens. Reassure them, hey, I'm so sorry, mommy doesn't mean to be, daddy doesn't mean to be screaming at you, we love you, okay, we're just trying to keep you safe. This protects the child from feeling ashamed or guilt, okay. Be as positive with that child as you possibly can be. Extending social relations. Interacting with others teaches them new skills and attitudes. It helps them get along with others and socialize with other children. Toddlers with a healthy attachment to caregivers have a safe base which to meet people. Um, toddlers with a healthy attachment are more apt to want to meet new people and to socialize with new people because they feel secure because they know their caregiver, mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever the caregiver is, is going to come back for them. They know that they're there for them. Um, toddlers are now spending time with other adults, babysitters, relatives, and neighbors. Give them that opportunity that they're not always with mom and dad. You know, let them be around other people. Having more than one caregiver often helps toddlers to adjust to others. Okay? If, you know, mom and dad don't always care for the child, that there is a babysitter 
or a grandparent or aunt and uncle that occasionally takes the child for periods of time. It helps them to be able to adjust better to social situations. Um, it helps the children expect differences, except expect, excuse me, expect differences among other people. And when they have positive experiences with adults, they start to develop trusting relationships. And here's where we look again at our trust versus mistrust. Getting along with other children. During the second year, they tend to interact more with other children. At first, they are brief and more imitating others' actions with a toy, and later they talk as they play. Okay, we're going to stop here today. It gives you a good foundation of um, what helps toddlers develop socially and emotionally. I hope you enjoyed um, hearing the monster at the end of this book. That's one of my favorites. And we'll pick up tomorrow.